Violence in a Women's Prison from 1982, directed by Bruno Matte, was released by Severn Films and was actually a film my wife wanted to get. So way back when Severn was doing one of their Black Friday 50% off deals, I ordered it along with a few other films, including Emmanuel and The Last Cannibals, after my wife piqued some interest in the Black Emmanuel series. Black Emmanuel is a series of Italian softcore sexploitation films, mostly starring Laura Jimzer as Emmanuel, typically a reporter doing some reporting when she gets caught up into some shenanigans. Violence in a Women's Prison is the eighth entry into this unconnected series, with it being the seventh to have Laura Jimzer to star as Emmanuel. I say unconnected because there's really no continuity between the films, or at least from what I've seen. Violence starts as Emmanuel and other prisoners are being transported to the prison that's ran by a brutal warden and her gang of torturous guards that makes life a living hell inside the prison. The film jumps around between different characters for the purpose of some softcore sex scenes, before finally centering on Emmanuel and the plot of the film a little more than halfway in. This incohesion for the purpose of a titillation actually really hurts the film. Sure, you get to see some boobies and whatnot, but where's the plot? Where's the story? Where's the emotion? Honestly, once the plot gets going, so does the film. Basically, Emmanuel falsifies her crime in order to infiltrate the prison to write a piece on the treatment of its inmates. Once the guards become privy of it, it actually turns into a decent mystery slash prison escape movie. Of course, throughout, characters make stupid decisions in order to fill the runtime with some bazoombas, but it's definitely the better part of the film. The prison's kind of a, like a co-ed prison with like a section of a male prison, so there's that. So there's that point for some of the for some of the scenes, I suppose. Most of the film is dubbed over since movies like this were basically filmed without any audio, since it's a weird mix of different nationalities and native speakers that the genre like this is filled with. So their solution was just to dub everything, which honestly led to some hilarious moments, especially with one of the male prisoners. <laughs> Can't you see what she's doing to you? Stop it at once. She's turning all of you into a bunch of drooling savages. I also love the music in the film. I just love the corny music that kind of haunts these films in this genre. <laughs> For the most part, the violence of the film is rather corny with some bad blood makeup, but much of the violence comes in the form of sexual violence in terms of some pretty hefty trigger words. There is a scene where Emmanuel gets thrown into solitary where she is attacked and swarmed by a plague of rats, and I'm genuinely curious on how they made the rats have these red eyes. It's a cool effect as long as no rats were harmed. There's also a gross poop fight where Emmanuel throws a canteen on the guard and they just kind of roll around in it, which is gross, but it doesn't necessarily look like what they're trying to sell. The transfer from Severn looks great for what it is, and I do like the fact that they used real stunts to sell some of the effects. Like there's a scene where a girl gets thrown off the edge of this dirt mound and it looks rough. There's also a wide angle long shot of someone rappelling down the side of the prison that was pretty cool too. Overall though, there really isn't too much to say about this one. It's not anything amazing, it has some fun moments, some decent visuals, the visuals are really the standout, I mean, this is a very visual movie. The visual, the visuals, oh my god, the visuals. In all seriousness though, this isn't a very good film either. It's got a weak plot with bad acting and dubbing that can lead to some very unintentionally funny moments. The same could be said about the score. If you like these kind of movies, then go for it. But if you're not a fan of these kind of things, then you should probably pass on it. I'm giving it a 3 out of 10.